Hello everybody, namaskar to all the beautiful people out there because you're doing amazingly well. Welcome back to our channel English with Ashish. And guys, today in this lesson, I am going to explain what is a comma splice in English. It's a very common mistake that most English learners make. So we are going to learn what exactly is this mistake, how to fix it. This is going to be super exciting. All right, so I'm excited. I know you guys are too. Let's do it. So guys, let's understand what is a comma splice in English. Guys, a comma splice in English is a grammatical mistake. It's a mistake that occurs that happens when you add two sentences, two independent clauses, when you bring two independent clauses together using a comma, right? So it's type of a run-on sentence. Now, what is a run-on sentence? We'll talk about it uh, in a separate lesson, right? So a comma splice is nothing but a situation where we add or we bring together two sentences using a comma, right? Let me show you an example. This is for office use. You cannot use it. So guys, in this example, we have two sentences. It's an amalgamation of two sentences, two independent clauses. Number one, this is for office use. Number two, you cannot use it. And both these sentences can stand alone, right? But what has happened here is we have brought these two sentences together using a comma, which is a mistake. Because a comma is not capable of adding two sentences together. It is not capable of bringing two sentences together, right? And that's why it's a mistake, a comma splice. Let me show you more examples. I cannot marry her. She will ruin my life. Sentence number one, sentence number two, brought together using a comma. Mistake. Last night, we watched a movie. It was dark and scary. So this example has two sentences. We watched a movie. It was dark and scary. Last night is an adverb. Right. Again, these two sentences have been added using a comma, a mistake. Number three, this is not just a job. This is everything for me. Again, we have two independent clauses here. This is not just a job. This is everything for me. So now you know what is a comma splice, how it looks like in a sentence. It's a very common mistake. You must have done this, right? A lot of teachers do it. A lot of um, English speakers, English speakers do it, right? It's a very common mistake. Now let's understand how to correct this mistake, how to fix a comma splice in English, right? So there are five ways, yes, five ways to fix a comma splice in English. Number one, using a period. Number two, using a semicolon. Number three, using a colon. Number four, using a comma and a coordinating conjunction. And number five, using a subordinating conjunction. Let's talk about them one by one, all right? We'll start with using a period, which is also called a full stop. This is the most easiest way to fix a comma splice. All you have to do is you have to use a period at the end of the first sentence, or you can simply say replace the comma with a period. That's it, right? Comma splice sentences. I cannot marry her. She will ruin my life. Now, all you have to do is just replace the comma with the period. That's it. I cannot marry her, period. She will ruin my life. Simple. Number two, last night we watched a movie sentence number one. Period. It was dark and scary. That's all you have to do to fix a comma splice. The most easiest way, the most easiest method to fix a comma splice, use a period. Great. Let's talk about number two way. Second way, using a semicolon. So using a semicolon is another way to fix a comma splice. Uh, it's a way to add two or more sentences together. But you have to understand, it is only possible when the sentences have some sort of relation between them, they're connected to each other. If they're not, it's not good. It's not right to use a semicolon, right? Let me show you some examples. Comma splice examples. I cannot marry her. She will ruin my life. Last night we watched a movie. It was dark and scary. This is not just a job. This is everything for me. Okay. So look at example number one. I cannot marry her. She will ruin my life. So guys, are these sentences closely related, talking about the same thing? Yes, these are. And that's exactly why we can use a semicolon. I cannot marry her. She will ruin my life. We're talking about the same person here, right? And that's why we can use a semicolon. I cannot marry her. Semicolon, she will ruin my life. Number two, last night we watched a movie. Complete sentence. Last night we watched a movie, right? It was dark and scary. So we have two sentences. Can we use a semicolon to add these two sentences together? Yes, we can. Why? Because both these sentences are related right, uh, connected to each other. Last night we watched a movie and the second sentence talks about how the movie was. It was dark and scary. So you can use a semicolon and add these two sentences together. All right. 
Last night we watched a movie, Sammy Colin. It was dark and scary. Number three, this is not just a job. This is everything for me. Now, guys, are these sentences related to each other? Closely related? Yes, these are. Why? Number one, this is not just a job. Number two, this is everything for me. So both these sentences are talking about the same thing, right? Referring to the same idea. And that's why we can use a semicolon and add these two sentences together. So this is not just a job. This is everything for me, right? So this is the second way to uh, fix a comma splice. And this is more of an advanced way to do it, right? But do that when the sentences you're bringing together are closely related, talking about the same thing. Then only you will use a semicolon and add those sentences together. But if that is not the case, if the sentences you are bringing together are not closely related, not talking about the same thing, don't use the semicolon, use a period, right? Look at this example. I love teaching. Monu is a great human being. My question to you, are these sentences related to each other? No, they're not. So when such is the case, when the sentences you are bringing together are not related to each other, you cannot use a semicolon. Just use a period and separate them. All right. Okay. Number three, using a colon. This is the third way to fix a comma splice. Now, guys, you have to be more careful here. You will only use a colon to add two sentences together when the second sentence summarizes or concludes or justifies the first one or the focus in the sentence is on the second sentence, right? If such is the case, then only you will, you will use a colon. And otherwise, you cannot do that, right? Let me show you some examples. I cannot marry her. She will ruin my life. Are these closely related? Yes. I cannot marry her. Now, why is that? She will ruin my life. So it concludes the first one. It justifies the first one. It tells the reason why first happens, why I can't marry her. She will ruin my life, right? Number two, last night we watched a movie, it was dark and scary. Guys, can we use a colon here? Now, before you do that, ask this question to yourself. Does the second part uh, justify or conclude or summarize the first part, the first sentence? It doesn't seem to be doing that, right? It does give information about the first part. Uh, we watched a movie, how was it? It was dark and scary. So I personally would use a semicolon. I would not use a colon here. But if you do that, it's all right. But you got to understand, a colon is not very common, right? It breaks the flow of your sentence. So make sure you don't overuse it, all right? Third, this is not just a job. This is everything for me. Can we use a colon here? We absolutely can. Why? This is not just a job. Then what is it? This is everything for me. So here, the second part, the second sentence explains concludes the first one. So we rightfully can use a colon here, right? So this is the third way to fix a comma splice. Let's look at the fourth way. And the fourth way to fix a comma splice is to use a comma and a coordinating conjunction. Now, what is a coordinating conjunction? Now we have seven, that's five. <laughs> we have seven coordinating conjunctions in English. And these are for, and, nor, but, or, yet. So fanboys, okay? So this is a great way to add two sentences to uh, independent clauses together. And uh, you do that when the sentences have some sort of relation between them, right? And the conjunction shows that relation. Okay, let me show you some examples. I cannot marry her, she will ruin my life, right? So the second sentence works as the reason why it can't happen. I cannot marry her, she will ruin my life. We can use a coordinating conjunction here and that is for. I cannot marry her, comma, for she will ruin my life. For works as a reason. I cannot marry her, for she will ruin my life. Second, last night we watched a movie. It was dark and scary. Last night we watched a movie. The second sentence talks about it, right? So it gives additional information about it. We can use the conjunction and here. Last night we watched a movie and it was dark and scary. Let's look at the fifth way. Uh, the fifth way to correct a comma splice is to use a subordinating conjunction, right? There's so many subordinating conjunctions in English. Some of these are as, because, since, unless, as, until, when, where, why, how, if, and so on, right? Okay, now using a subordinating conjunction before an independent clause makes that uh, independent clause a dependent clause, but it does solve a problem and that's what we're looking for, right? Okay, let me show you some examples. 
I cannot marry her, she will ruin my life. Okay. I cannot marry her because she will ruin my life. I cannot marry her as she will ruin my life. Right. We can bring the dependent clause in the beginning as well. Now, when you put the dependent clause before the independent clause, you have to use a comma after the dependent clause, right? At the end of the dependent clause. For example, because she will ruin my life, comma, I can't marry her. Or since she will ruin my life, comma, I cannot marry her. That's another way to correct the comma splice. Number two, last night we watched a movie. It was dark and scary. Last night we watched a movie. Sentence number one, it was dark and scary. Sentence number two, that gives additional information about the sentence number one. We watched a movie. How was it? It was dark and scary. So the only conjunction that seems uh, logical to use here is and, and it's a coordinating conjunction, right? So uh, this sentence is not in such a way where we can use a subordinating conjunction, right? It doesn't have that relation. So you don't have to forcefully use a subordinating conjunction, right? There are multiple ways to fix a comma splice. You don't have to forcefully use a subordinating conjunction. Okay, so these are the five ways to correct a comma splice. So I'm pretty sure now you know what a comma splice in English is. What are the ways to correct it? and how to correct it, right? So I'm gonna check your understanding now and on your screen are some examples. What you have to do is, you have to find out whether you have comma splices here in these sentences or not and you have to correct it, right? So that's your task for the day. If you do it correctly, you pass the test, all right? You mastered the topic now. Okay, so that's all about today's lesson, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button. If you guys are new to the channel, watching it for the first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, press that bell icon. And uh, I'll see you guys very soon. Till then, keep learning. Have fun. Peace.